ha 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 Hello and welcome to a fresh trying new makeup video where I have already tried this makeup but my microphone wasn't turned on! <laughs> but we do have a very diverse for lack of the word random, smattering of new makeup that we'll be trying today and reviewing stuff that y'all have never seen, like brands that I've never tried before that are new to my channel, and then some cool new things from brands that we do already know and love. I know for a fact that it's going to be a cute face of makeup because this will be the third time that I've done it. So let's go ahead and jump in. <laughs> the first thing that we're gonna be using is this foundation from a brand called Bosma. I have enjoyed every aspect of interacting with this packaging. It came in this really cool cardboard box that instead of the branding being printed, it was embossed into it. It was just lovely. Like the whole thing was just very different for a reason and it was memorable. Now, the idea behind this foundation, the creator whose last name is Bosma, or maybe her first name is Bosma, oh no, I need to figure that out. I'll put it on the screen. But she created this line because she's a burn victim and she just was disappointed with a lot of the foundations and their performance and coverage level and I think also their shade ranges, you know, on the market. And the shade range is exhaustive. This is the only product that they make so far, so I like that they kind of concentrated their efforts there. Some of the challenges that I have had with stick foundations in the past is just that they don't love a thin application. They usually have like one way that they like to be worn and that's it, or they don't love a full face application. They'll just be almost like a big hunky chunky concealer. This, the first time that I used it, I was a little disappointed. I was like, ooh, it's really grabbing in my pores, but it was because when I test makeup a lot of times I do it on like my you know face first thing when I wake up in the morning and so all of my skincare dried overnight and everything then I will you know wash my face and get on camera kind of thing once I've tested everything out. In this case this really likes fresh skincare. It needs the little bit of slip in order to be even on the skin. I don't mind that at all you know because I am going to always like really hydrate my skin so I'm gonna put a little bit more on. It is meant to go to full coverage. I don't know that it really does but the best thing about it for me is that it doesn't really matter because <laughs> it's an unbelievably good shade match so I will say I am not the most difficult person to shade match I do consider myself to be very much the like squarely in the middle of fair neutral kind of you know white girl shade and most lines have a shade for me that's just, I'm, I'm very, you know, widely accommodated by most shade ranges. This is a pretty large shade range, pretty well dispersed. It just makes me realize like how much everyone deserves to have a really good shade match because like when you have this good of a shade match, you can choose how much of something you want to wear. It is super self-setting. I think that it's going to be great for, you know, combination or even oily skin types. It's not greasy at all. I meant to put on a primer and I forgot. <laughs> So I'm actually just gonna hit this one. What is happening in my life? I just shook my Fix Plus Magic Radiance and I think that the lid is broken and I just got it all over me and my brush. What is going on? Am I just supposed to quit today? Is that it? Am I just supposed to turn my camera off and go back to bed? Like what is happening? I just used that earlier and that didn't happen. Uh, my hands are all sticky. I definitely think a sponge would be a better choice regardless of what you have under it because when I take my fingers and just kind of press it, it smooths it out anywhere that it wanted to catch in my pores. And I really dig, I really dig like the whole vibe of it. It's one of the better performing stick foundations I've ever used and I actually really like the coverage level. So I am next going to go in with the Kosas Concealer. We're gonna keep trying to push through here, but I wanna answer some questions from y'all. <laughs> Try and like get back into a flow state here, even though apparently like I'm not supposed to. What has been inspiring you creatively lately? I'm in a funk. So first of all, I wanna acknowledge that being in a funk is completely normal this time of year, especially if you're, you know, in the Western Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere, because, you know, it's just kind of gnarly. I mean, I'm looking at snow. It snowed a lot last night. For the first time 
almost all year, I wanna say. It like really snowed and stuck. I do wanna say, this foundation, I think it must have a similar amount of silicones in it as the Kosas, because the Kosas works really well with it. Anyway, creatively speaking, <laughs> Because I didn't used to think of myself as a creative. I actually really thought of myself as someone who like went to art school as a fluke and that like creativity was just something that like some people are born with and some people aren't. And like when I was creative, it was finite. Like I really felt like creativity was a finite resource in my life and I could only use it on a certain amount of things. And I will say <laughs> creative energy on a day-to-day -day basis is finite. Like you can really, really burn yourself out if you do kind of what I do, which is I spread my creative energy too thinly sometimes. And so you'll see that like my uh, video concepts will be a little bit, you know, repetitive and things like that. And it's just because I'm a little bit creatively drained. I just don't come up with like the most clever probably. I'm not Mr. Beast. I'm not, you know, hiring a team of people to be like, oh, well, you know, what's the next thing that's going to be the best way to frame my next video to get the most clicks kind of thing. I'm just like, here's, what it is. <laughs> Here's what it is. This is what I have for you today. And like, I probably could package them better and, you know, be more successful, but I just run out of creative energy because I think that like this job requires you to spread yourself pretty thinly between platforms. And I'm also a painter. And I sometimes feel like each one of those things is costing me almost like equity in my, you know, creative reserves. But I was thinking about this yesterday. I'm gonna do my contour real quick. I'm just using the Alma Beauty contour. If this is your first time to one of my videos, like I use this in almost every single video. So I'm gonna throw this on a BK106. I was thinking about this yesterday because I was like, okay, I do feel like sometimes I have trouble making clever video concepts and that like, the ideas like won't come. Like it just feels like I'm forcing it and I don't wanna force it. I want it to be like an inspiration thing. And I've learned to trust that because again, I used to think of myself as not really a creative person, but now I have the belief that everybody's a creative person if they wanna be. Like you just kind of have to find your medium where you feel safe to create because creating anything requires vulnerability. I realized like, you know, I used to be an editor, right? I used to work as an editor for a blog and I would have like, you know, new writers or interns working under me. And a lot of times they would get very frustrated or hurt about me editing out their words. And I, I had to tell them, I was like, it, it can't be finite. You can't have this like limited amount of your own inspiration and creativity to work from because then you're always going to tie your self-worth to your work and or to your words specifically. And then if I cut your words, it's like I'm cutting your self-worth. And that those two things can't be tied together for the sake of your self-preservation. You have to be able to create unjudgmentally, you know, in, in a way that's like, this is not taking a piece of my soul. I'm not mining against my own well-being in order to do this. I wondered why I couldn't do that for painting. And again, I took a class online with Celia Lees. I mean, it's not like with her, like she just, you know, teaches it, it's on Artify. And I think it was just really helpful to see somebody else's process because I did go to art school and I do feel like I have the skills, but not like I said, not necessarily like the infinite creative motivation or inspiration for, you know, the kind of output that like would denote me as an artist sort of thing. And I had to get to a place where art in and of itself, like creating art, I'm pointing to paintings, there are paintings all around me, had to be from a place of non-judgment from me, the same way that I write, because I don't tie my self-worth to my writing, you know, it's just something that I feel like I'm good at, and so I do it, and then if somebody tells me it's bad, I'm like, all right, I will do some more, you know what I mean? I'll fix it, whatever, and like, I can approach that conversation from a, you know, standpoint of humility and be like, yeah, you know, I'm not like the best at this, and so therefore I'm able to take feedback or understand the context of the criticism or whatever. But for my art, for whatever reason, it was just this big, crazy, sore spot where I was like, if somebody tells me it's bad, that's a referendum on me and I am a bad artist kind of thing. And I had to get to this place where I didn't tie myself worth to it. And if you're following along at home, you know that I always, I always cite the generational Neptune Capricorn, like every millennial within like 14 years of a, like a birth chart was born under Neptune being in Capricorn, which means that we inherently 
derive our self-worth from our output and our productivity and inherently we try to optimize everything and it needed to be painting needed to be something for me that I didn't optimize and I find myself sometimes trying to optimize it and I have to stop you know I have to stop myself and go okay maybe you've done too much today and it's a privilege to be able to do that obviously but like I know that my art suffers when I try to optimize it and so it is actually this like constant lesson in meditation on de-optimizing it but when I get it right when I actually am able to like create in a non-judgmental way in a way that I don't feel like it's trying to constantly make it into something that is optimizable, I find that instead of it sapping my energy, it actually becomes a source of creative energy. And I feel like sometimes what I do is I look at the canvas and I just slap everything on there in a non-judgmental way. Like I have a painting over here that is straight up ugly, okay? And I love her. I love her because things need to be ugly sometimes. And just knowing that like this is an unpunishing, very forgiving environment for me where I can go over here and paint and I know that eventually the outcome will be something that I like and that I like it more because it started out ugly and honoring that as part of the process actually helps me stay creatively motivated because I realize that it comes from in here. It doesn't have to be an external thing, you know? And I don't have to kind of keep consuming in order to create. Consume in order to create. It can kind of be this, this thing where, you know, it's feeding itself. And that feels really healthy. So yeah, I find myself craving painting for that reason. And I don't feel like it necessarily like saps my creative output or my creative inspiration, you know? Which is new and I like it. Okay, the reason that I wasn't doing anything while I was explaining that is because I really needed to talk about this. So I picked up these. These are the new, where's the other one? These are the new House Labs blushes. And I got the shades Hibiscus Haze and Pomelo Peach. Hibiscus Haze, Pomelo Peach. Now you can see these are very much shades that I would go for. This is, you know, my healthy cheeks color and this is just a very easy shade for me to wear, okay? But they are quite pigmented, saturated, you know, in their actual vividness. But they're also that House Labs gel to powder formula that the bronzer comes in. So that's what they look like. And I'm gonna go ahead and swatch the Danessa Myricks and the Charlotte Tilbury matte wands against it so that you can see the differences in the shades like for, you know what I mean, just for like, a general scale reference of the pigmentation. All right. Up top we have the two from House Labs. So we have Pomelo Peach and Hibiscus Haze. This is the Pillow Talk Peach and the just regular Pillow Talk from the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Wands. And this here is the Yummy Skin Blush that just came out from Janessa Myricks. So as these look incredibly saturated in the pan, right? They are saturated in color, but the formula itself lends itself really beautifully to being sheared out on the skin because it does behave, yes, it's a little bit creamy, but it does behave mostly like a powder. Whereas I do think that you can get something really, really sheer out of especially the pink pillow top. And I do like that it's a, de a more desaturated shade, a less saturated shade. So you're going to end up with something that's just easier for a pale girl to wear and to build up without it getting clowny. And so that is something that you kind of have to be careful with these with because they are vivid shades. They're very like true shades. They don't have a lot of like, you know, ashy muddiness to them, which means that they're going to work on several skin tones. And that also means that someone like me can get something a little too high contrast if she's not careful. So I guess that that is, you know, what I'll couch this in. It's just like, yes, they are vivid, but they can be used and spread out a lot more easily than like the vividness that you get with the Danessa Myricks blushes. I have a lot of trouble getting those to sheer out enough that they're not like wildly contrasty on my skin. And the colors are a little bit more subtle. I would say that the most subtle here, obviously, the most like nuanced, you know, muddy, mucky one is obviously Pillow Talk, but they are still more nuanced than the Danessa Myricks ones. So for all of my different skin tones out there, you know, if you find that the Danessa Myricks ones work for you, these are probably gonna work for you, but like, 
they're going to be more of like a sheer kind of powder quality. And then if you find that those are too, you know, vivid for you, these might work, but I definitely think that it's something that like a pale person should be aware of. I would say it's like intermediate level difficulty because I think that this is an attempt and a pretty darn good attempt at making blushes that work on every skin tone. And it's just like people like me have to be a little bit more careful with them. There it is. I'm putting it on a 104. This is Pomelo Peach. And I'm just being really tippy tappy here. And it'll go on a little bit patchy at first on my skin, but because it's got the kind of like gel to powder consistency, look at that. It really like shears out in a lovely way. I just find that I don't have to be quite as deliberate with it as I do with those uh, other two formulas that I just swatched because they're so creamy. And this is like, you know, it kind of feathers itself out at the edges really easily. And just look how healthy that looks. It's just so nice. It's just something that like, I kind of want to keep putting on, you know? But I do have the pink one. I'm gonna hold off on the pink one until we get my eyes on and everything. But like, I would be content to leave my entire complexion like that, which speaks highly of the foundation because the foundation does have quite a bit of coverage, but look how natural it looks. Mainly because it's a really great shade match, but also because the finish is beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what I'm gonna do so that we can answer questions while I do it. So I just got this lovely package in the mail from my friend Hindash and it had the hero line in it, which we're not gonna use today because I have another eyeliner that I'm going to use, but I have the new color fluid in canvas and I'm gonna use that to base my eyes with. And then I got some stuff from Johnny Concert. Y'all saw, I should have used this today, I forgot, but this is the Rituals, the primer kind of stuff. It's like a serum. Would have gone lovely with this, honestly, but you know, I'm having a, I'm having kind of a rough go of it today. But uh, I also took that as an opportunity. I paid for this with my own money. That one was free. This I bought uh, just a quad and I'm gonna apply it. I'll give you all my thoughts afterwards, but these are the, these are the shades. This is, I designed this. I put these four shades in here and uh, yeah, you just watch how it goes on and then we'll discuss. How often do you read Reddit comments about you and how do you not let it get to you? I'm wondering if this person is alluding to something specific. <laughs> like, do I need to go look? I mean, okay, I will start by saying that, by the way, I love this stuff so much and the canvas color is a really, really great uh, base to make eyeshadows, you know, show up more true because it's just such like a, a blinked out kind of, canvas color. So if you're unaware, there is a, don't go over there. It's an absolute cesspool where good intentions go to die. But there is a board called beauty guru chatter where people just can't seem to help themselves. There are nice people over there trying to do the Lord's work, kind defenders of logic, but they are very much drowned out by the overwhelming amount of sad people who take to the internet to try and find other sad people to be sad with and angry with and disappointed with. And they really have chosen beauty gurus on the internet to be the receivers of their floating frustration with life. That's how I feel about beauty guru chatter. But I have read it in the past. I'm not going to claim to be, you know, this like, person who's entirely immune to, I mean, first of all, I'm an Aries. I'm just like, people talking about me? I should preface this by saying, the world is not comfortable overall with confident women. And so when I speak from a, a place of confidence, it might make you uncomfortable because we have a lot of internalized misogyny and that is not a referendum on anybody, especially a woman, you know, specifically because it's part of our society, okay? It is definitely a blind spot to be aware of and that's what I'm trying to do is make you aware of it, but it might make you uncomfortable when you hear me talk about myself as like a confident person. So I always try to be, again, aware of my blind spots and open to learning about my blind spots. So I try to approach all conversations from a place of learning, humility, and going, huh, okay, I'm going to really assess what you just said and see if it just, being eager to have the foundations of your previously held beliefs shaken. Like I find change exciting. I'm always trying to kind of enrich my understanding of other people's experiences, even though I know that like 
I can't ever fully understand it. I really want to try, even though it makes me look like an idiot a lot of the time. It's fine. I'm not afraid of looking like an idiot. I think that that's true confidence is not being afraid to look like an idiot, okay? Like, I am an idiot a lot of the time and I'm not afraid of someone calling me an idiot and me being able to learn from it. And that has come with, like, years of trying to skirt those things and run from them and realizing it's actually easier to just approach them, right? Sorry, I was talking so fast because my computer, like my, my card was almost out of uh, space. So anyway, all that to say, I really try to give oxygen to at least enough of someone else's point in order to do some self-examination, right? Because I do want everyone to feel welcome here. I mean, not everyone. <laughs> Either way, in the past there have been people who have misunderstood me and taken to beauty guru chatter or elsewhere to to talk about that. And again, there's a big part of me that's just like, that, that uses that as fuel. You know, I'm just like, when you're moving up in life, when you level up as the, you know, the mastermind people like to say, people, you think they're going to congratulate you, but they don't. And when certain people which I guess they're uncertain people because it's all very anonymous. You know, I don't know who anybody is over there. So when uncertain people decide to malign you for your behavior, you kind of try and pick, pick apart certain things, usually that is like a sign that they feel like you're kind of like betraying something that they had in common with you before. And so they thought that you thought the way that they did or that you were similar to them in another way and now they feel like they can't relate to you as much and they need to be able to like articulate that that betrayal. And so I try to like see it through that, that lens a lot of times. It's like, oh, this person kind of might be in a tough spot in their life and they need the parasocial relationship and then and I kind of inadvertently disappointed them or whatever and like they have a right to their opinion and you know I can just let that be because at the end of the day I'm protecting my energy I have had enough people in my life that have abused the kind of access that I've given to my energy and so it is kind of about protecting your peace at the end of the day but like there was one person on Reddit for the longest time who very clearly watched all of my videos in like a hate watching kind of way and used that to fuel a crusade against me and trying to like discredit me for one reason or another. I mean, discredit me on the, the grounds of some of the dumbest stuff I've ever seen, I'm gonna be honest. Like, just wildly silly stuff. And one time I just got frustrated with it. And I said, you know, I feel like you have a very specific ax to grind with me specifically. And the stuff that you are saying about me, it's the same like three points you keep making. And like none of them actually like stands to reason. Like you, you, you put them out in the air and they evaporate, you know? And the person responded with like a fully like Dwight Schrute level self own where they were like, actually it was like in this video that you said this and in this video that you said this and then this and then you did this in your real life and I watched this and you did this and I was like, ooh, um, creepy? Creepy how much you hate me and how much you know about me. Like, yikes. And so uh, my only response was the lion doesn't lose sleep because at the end of the day, the lion does not lose sleep over the opinions of sheep and you are welcome to take that with you as well. I am not declaring myself the only lion. You too are a lion if you wanna be because it truly is about protecting your peace. It's like what Rob Beauty Christie was saying in her last video where she was like, you don't make what you make for your critics because you'll never make your critics happy, okay? Like you make what you make for the people who enjoy your creation, your art. There's always exceptions, you know? I think that like anybody who comes to me in good faith, and you can tell, you know, when something is in good faith or at least you can give them the benefit of the doubt that it's in good faith initially and sometimes you can turn a conversation into being in good faith because I think that a lot of people assume that you're going to like always meet them where they are as angry and frustrated as they are, and if there's anything I've learned from having a toddler, is, is just to, to not do that. But if someone comes to me in good faith and they have a, you know, fair criticism, I am willing to have a discussion with them about things that, again, checking my blind spots, things like that. Uh, and, and sometimes it can get a little navel gazy, you know, but I'm willing to, you know, always hear people out. But again, you can kind of tell when somebody's coming to a situation in bad faith, and most of the time I leave them on red. 
I think that there's no greater power move than leaving someone on red. And it, it brings me all the satisfaction in the world. There's just something so nice about like looking at someone's just overwhelming effort to hurt you and just closing out the tab. That's a them problem at the end of the day. If they don't have a good faith clear cut case to try to like actually have a human to human conversation about, which if they're going to beauty guru chatter most of the time, they're not, you know, then that's a them problem. That's not a me problem. Okay, so I've just been using these two so far. This one is called Pacific Peach and it's got this really lovely kind of like peachy pinky gold shift on it. And then this one is called Blood Moon and it's one of my dystopian cowgirl fortune teller type colors that goes kind of like red purple with like a little blue shift on it. But I find that this peachy one is the one that I use the most. It's just good at blending everything. The one thing that I don't totally love is this brown right here because without mixing it with something else, it just kind of sticks on its own and doesn't want to spread around. So I have to be a little bit ginger with it more than I would want to be, you know? Is it just, it doesn't seem to behave like the other ones. Now the other one though, this white one, I like it a lot because it actually does have like a purple, purple pink shift on it. And it looks incredible on the inner corner. So awesome. This is giving a very like ethereal thing. Look at how effective that actually is on the inner corner at like brightening. They are high quality shadows. I just don't find there to be a lot of nuance to the formulas. Like all the formulas are basically the same. There's no mattes, there's no like bright shimmers. And when I first saw Johnny Concert come up on Credo back in the day, like when I first noticed the brand, I was like, oh, this looks like it's gonna be one of those like indie brands that has, you know, just absolutely the most unbelievable like art supply kind of textures to it. And it just wasn't the case. When I got it in my hands, I was like, this is pretty much, this is a pretty normal eyeshadow. We're gonna go in with this brown here, but I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of the purple so that we don't end up with anything we regret. I'm gonna be really careful. I just was trying to get like a bedroom eyes color out of it. And the brown is just very overwhelming. You see, it's just, mm. I'm gonna go back with just the purple here. The brown was called coffee or die. <laughs> and the white is called hearts on fire. But you see how the brown doesn't want to move? <sighs> it's a little annoying. So I'm gonna take some of the peach. Peach is just kind of my savior here. I'm just trying to get it to do something. I'm gonna take a smaller brush. I'm gonna take the BK207 in the purple and work that onto here. Give us some visual interest so that it's not just like peach and mud. I really, I like all of them except the brown. The other thing though that I find a little bit frustrating is when there are these websites that let you build your own palette. I find that, I know that like brands have to kind of build their own technology to do this in a lot of cases, but they're frustrating because they don't have a really good image a lot of times of like each shade and the finish on the shade. It'll just be like the name of the shade. And I'm just like, like on Surratt, like you can't see anything about them. You can't see a swatch of the color. All you have is like a picture of the pan and like a, you know, a verbal description of the color. And I'm just like, what? Of course I ended up with a palette that I don't really like. Cause I, I, I didn't know what the heck I was buying and it's not cheap. So it's a little frustrating. I just think, I mean, I know that like, you know, everybody's got their typing fingers right now going, you need to get a, you know, a palette from Lethal. You're right, I do. I do and I will. I really like Blood Moon. They are a little dusty. I wish that they were stickier. It's just not my favorite formula, but it's pretty. All right, so the last thing that I'm gonna do on my eyes here, because yes, I like this, but like we have no differentiation in the textures. They're all the same. I'll just swatch it. They're all the same finish. And I'm actually really disappointed with that brown because like, look, when you do a really heavy swatch of it, it's 
a really pretty kind of like brown color but like as soon as you spread it out it goes like sooty and black like black gray and it's just difficult to work with i really feel like i know that it's called you know coffee or whatever but there weren't a lot of options and i just would have liked something that was a little bit more brown based than being a black or you know deep charcoal gray with the brown on top it just makes it harder to use so I am now going to differentiate. I'm going to create some new texture here with the Hindash color fluid in the original Boy Tears. And this is just one of my favorite things in the world, okay? Because it is a really easy to wear kind of peach color on me. And you can, and I say this all the time, but you can get everything from like a sheer wet look from this shimmer all the way up to like full opacity. I'm gonna use it kind of just over that apricot color, like so. And I just thought of it because it's got that apricot kind of color to it, just a little bit of peachiness to it, you know? Like it's gold, sure, but it is kind of a peachy gold on me. And I can even take a little bit more of the peach out of here, which is easily my favorite color in the whole thing. And blend back onto it, keep the purple. I like that. So, new brand to my channel, besides Bosma today, is I bought a whole mess of stuff from La Perla. Yeah, the outrageously overpriced luxury lingerie company. They make perfumes, and also, as it turns out, makeup so i got two lipsticks from them i got a brow mousse a mascara and a liquid eyeliner okay and don't adjust your televisions like this does look very much like make beauty and westman atelier it even has the i mean sure the la perla logo isn't in that but everything else is in that stupid farm to table freaking font that everything is in now that I'm just so tired of. I can't even see it. But like, it's the same thing that's on the Make Beauty packaging. It's the same thing that's on the Westman Atelier packaging. It's just that, you know, it was really cool for a second, but it's just become so dated. That stupid typeface. Yep, that's right. I just got mad about a font. So anyway, I'm going to start with the liquid eyeliner and I'm just going to put some music over it probably that silly French music because it's when I am doing a bad job. That is when I typically play that. And that's because I'm not good at liquid eyeliner, but it's brown. The mascara is brown too. That's why I'm using this today and not Hindash's Hero line is just because I knew I was gonna be using the brown mascara. I wanted to make sure that the eyeliner matched the mascara and I just admire them for for doing that, for having a brown option. <sighs> Go. because I don't think I can do any better. <laughs> it's not ideal, but I, I did it. If you are good at liquid eyeliner, I just adore the fact that this is in glass and it's brown and it's pretty and it's pretty easy to work with. It's on a little brush. So here's the component. The little brush is not the most precise thing in the world. I kind of appreciate how it dries out. You know what I mean? Like you kind of have to keep redipping it a little bit because then it doesn't get away from you. But it could still get away from you. I'm still, you know, 
sweating quite a bit. So that out of the way, let's go with this brow stuff here. Again, this is in light brown, but it's all brown. And this is on a massive mascara wand. And I find that the best way to do this is actually to kind of go against the brows. Obviously this isn't going to draw new brows on, so you kind of have to already have brows to get any use out of this, but go in the wrong direction and then brush them down so that you can kind of coat the hairs. Does it remind me a lot of the Make Beauty one? Why, yes it does. And it's going to be kind of a pattern here. You know, I've noticed not just that the packaging is like that, but also the formulas. So, question becomes the chicken or the egg, you know? Now, the way that this stuff dries down is interesting. It has this non-freezing dry down. It's rubbery, but it is dry. The word is rubbery. It feels rubbery afterwards. And I'm gonna take just a regular spoolie here and just try and get some of that out of there. That was a little much. It's a little much cackums, but that's without penciling them in or anything, you know? And it gives quite a bit of visual impact. So I think it is worth the, you know, extra kind of tedium involved in getting it right because you are basically doing two steps in one. And it does freeze them pretty well. Like I wouldn't, like I said, it's not like a crunchy freeze, but it does dry. Now we're going to talk about this here mascara. And then I'm gonna go through these prices because they're absolutely off the wall, insane bonkers. I actually feel like my eyeliner's not even. <laughs> See you later. There we go. I think it's a little bit better. This is also brown. It also comes in a glass component with a plastic lid here. And it also is very wet to the point that like you have the urge to kind of wipe some of it off. Like when you first get it, the same way that you do with the Make Beauty mascara. They have just some really striking similarities to me. So because it's so wet, it really builds volume quickly on the eyelashes. And I feel like it's just a very unique appearance. So the first coat, you see it's like quite volumizing, builds a ton of kind of like beautiful bulk. And then you can then elongate with the wand, but the issue is the eyeliner has already dried where it touched my eyelashes. So you gotta be careful about that. Like go in and comb out the uh, the globs from the eyeliner, you kind of have to do that with anything, but liquid eyeliner is a pain. Now, what is very odd about this mascara is that like, I have absolutely no irritation when I'm putting it on, which is great. And I have no flaking or anything like that. It's just a really, really beautiful wear. But when I wash it off, it kind of stings my eyes for a second. Like, I don't really get it. Like I just hopped in the shower with it on yesterday and I was just like, wait, ow. <laughs> like it just felt like ow for a second, you know? Like it was just almost like a, like something, like a hairspray or something. We were just like, ah, it's a little uncomfortable. And then it passed. And when I wash it off you know, with just regular wash, it doesn't do that. So I don't really know. I don't know. It might've just been a fluke, but I mean, they are, absolutely laden. They are, I'm afraid to even open my eyes all the way because I, I know that it's gonna like leave a mark over my eyes. This is an exquisitely beautiful mascara, but it is like not joking around at all. So I do feel like we can go in with a little bit more blush now, but I do wanna go in with like another coat of the brow gel, get everything really nice and even. And even though it does dry down, like I said, you can still work something through it. Like I can get my clear brow gel on there, but it is it is a hold. And usually if I don't pencil my brows in, I do have to go in with, you know, two coats of any brow mousse. So I'll let that chill and then we'll go in with the clear. But yeah, I'm definitely noticing like that the eyes are like the only thing that you see right now. So I have a bronzer to try today and it's from the drugstore. I went to visit New York City and I stayed with Kelly Gooch and th th some company sent her a L'Oreal bronzer and she is a cruelty-free creator. And so she was like, I'm not gonna use this. Do you want it? And I was like, yes. So this is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour fresh wear bronzer in the shade 250 light. And I'm just using that 
to like warm everything up. So this is kind of what I was talking about, like bridging the gap between the contrast. A lot of times you'll have your foundation shade and then you will have your blush and your contour. And this is just kind of like uniting them. I do feel like this is just not blended. There we go. It's really pretty. Like that's a pretty blush. I will say like, if you're ever on the fence about like, oh, you know, where should I be buying my next powder product? I'm somebody who doesn't really love a lot of pigment. Like I don't want to have to fight against something that's really pigmented. Go to the drugstore. Everything's pretty low pigment there. And it's just made to be easier to use, you know? Doesn't necessarily mean that it's very good for deep skin tones because a lot of times what's too dark for me means it's actually, you know, ideal for deep skin tones. So. Six one half a dozen of the other. All right, blush. We do need some more, don't we? And that gives us a chance to try hibiscus haze. Ooh. Now, my friend Nicolette Panisi over on Instagram, she was like, the only thing that I'm not like loving about this straight out of the gate is that the packaging shows so many fingerprints. And I'm one of those people who's like, you know, everything in my life is everywhere and grimy and I don't care. I care, okay? She was right, look at this. I've used it like three times and it already looks like hell. So she's not wrong. If that's something that really bugs you, be aware. Okay, I think that this is gonna add some really lovely, very necessary dimension to this look. So, just tippy tappy. Not too much. I really don't want the local color to read as like super, super pink. I want to really preserve that apricot. Wait a second. No, okay. It doesn't smell like anything. Oh, I think the L'Oreal does. L'Oreal have a smell? Ooh, it does. It's scented. Huh. But this smells like coconut. What smells like coconut in my life right now? Not those. Y'all, what product did I just use recently that smells like coconut? I forgot. Hmm. Anyway. Okay, the lashes are almost dry, so I'm kind of pushing them up a little bit to get the curl. But this is as heavy as a tubing mascara, it just isn't a tubing mascara. But I mean, they're wild. They're so long. I'm gonna use a little bit of contour powder. I'm gonna use my Natasha Denure. Oh, let's take another, another suggestion here. Favorite fashion pieces so far this year. Ooh. <laughs> okay, well since you asked. I did recently for uh, Christmas, my husband got me a pair of Brother Valley's boots that are like the prettiest things I've ever owned. And I now throw them on with literally everything, like even sweatpants because they're amazing. They're like covered in astrology. They're amazing. We got them secondhand and they're just, they're the best. They're incredible. Even this out with a little powder, my little rattly brush. It's kind of funny. I'll call her Rattly Natalie. Just understand that when I'm talking about Rattly Natalie from now on, I'm talking about the 108 brush. And then I wanna fix my eye, fix, I'm gonna fix my eyeshadow. Everybody says that I look like Caitlyn Jenner. Might as well talk like Caitlyn Jenner. I'm Malibu. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot actually in my comments. People tell me I look like Caitlyn Jenner. I'm like, think. Oh, let's do my clear brow gel. I'm trying to think of what I've gotten versus what I wear the most. I will say like my main thing has been jewelry recently and I did re-sign with Ana Luisa. So you'll start seeing some more Ana Luisa pieces coming up soon, which is good because those are like a lot more affordable. But like lately I've been treating myself, like I had some gift cards for Christmas and stuff and I have been on the Lizzie Fortunato wagon. Also I'm taking a trip with some influencers in uh, in May. And so I've been buying some like stuff from, you know, Farm Rio and I got some new, uh, the Stodd Birkenstocks that are like croc embossed. Oh, and my friend Simbri took me to a sample sale in the city on Saturday and it was uh, for Rag and Bone. And so I got a new Rag and Bone leather jacket for $171. And I got a new ra Rag and Bone um, denim dress for $66. So that was pretty cool. I'm trying to think what else. I think that's kind of it for now. I don't know, as far as like my, my fashion 
acquisitions. But if you wanna know my absolute most worn thing, it has absolutely blown my mind how much I wear them. It's the freaking Jenny Kane flats, the mules. If y'all are ever considering just the basic ones, I don't know anything, I mean, I do. I don't like the shearling ones, they fit weird, and so I actually bought them and returned them. But the Jenny Kane mules, just the pointed mules, I have the ones that are like, you know, the printed calfskin. Oh my God. They're the most comfortable, I mean, as long as you don't need like orthopedic arch support because they don't have anything like that. They're the most comfortable freaking shoes. I wear them like traveling because I know if I'm like walking all over the airport or something, they're incredible. This is the Victoria Beckham little like waterline pencil. It gives kind of a otherworldly ethereal kind of thing. And the only other thing that I got <laughs> that I need to share here are these, and this was what originally even inspired me to buy these. My friend Lauren of Boldly Lauren, she did a sponsored post on her Instagram from La Perla, and I didn't know that La Perla even had makeup, and so I started kind of exploring. The images that they had of these lipstick colors online made them look like they were going to be dupes for Gone Grage. Let me just tell you, not at all. Not at freaking all, okay? So this is, these are two different formulas. This is the Matte Silk Lipstick in Cinnamon Red. Not exactly red. And this is the Satin Lip Balm in Espresso Lips. So I will swatch, I'll swatch them on my other hand for you. I really thought they were going to be really grungy and subtle and they're virtually identical, not quite, but virtually identical, different formulas, and they're so just like basic kind of on the nose, desaturated apricot, you know? So they go well with this look, but like I originally sent screenshots of it to Hannah being like, oh my gosh, look at these grungy colors, and I just want to dispel that. They are not grungy at all. So like I said, they're virtually the same color, but I will say that Cinnamon Red is a little bit more orange, and while I can wear it, here I'll show you. I can wear it. It's not my favorite. Again, I'm just a little disappointed in like the lack of trueness to the shade that was online. And the formula's pretty, like I wore it all day yesterday, but it's just like, it's just kind of a regular lipstick, you know? It's pretty and it wears a while, but it's not particularly hydrating. And the only thing that I will say about it is that they apply really easily. Like the shape of them is really subtle and lovely and they smell really nice. They smell like vanilla instead of like flowers or something, but I'm going to apply espresso lips because it's the balm formula. So it's a little bit more like low key. So the component is gorgeous. I think someone told me that this is called reading. R-E-E-D, and uh, so it's got that nice kind of texture there. And then it has the little LP on the top of it for La Perla. And it's just a magnetic closure, little twist up bullet. The bullet actually turns instead of, sometimes they just raise up. There's that, and again, this shade is gonna get a lot more play in my actual life than the other one because I just think that it's like a better shade for me. But the formula is also really, really nice. And then I wanna take a little bit of my Janessa Myrix here, the Yummy Skin Balm Powder, and I'm just gonna use a little 109 here from BK and get this out of my like, this kind of tends to make my, my cheek look a little bit jowly if I get it too close to that little line. And then just really define that nice opacity. And that, I feel pretty good about saying is the vibe today. I'm gonna give it a little spritz. I'm gonna use, here we go. Okay, so this is actually not Fix Plus, even though it's in a Fix Plus bottle. This is the Laura Mercier spray, and I transferred it to this because my spray bottle was broken. So, I like that it doesn't have a fragrance. We'll see what the finish is like when we dry it, when it dries. But yeah, I've never actually tried it because <laughs> my sprayer was broken. Ooh, <laughs> I feel it like freezing. <laughs> Yikes, not like freezing cold. I mean, like I can feel it kind of like freezing like a hairspray on my chest. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Okay, so let's discuss pricing of all of these things really quickly, really quickly, okay? Oh my God, that wet my eyelashes so much 
that now my mascara is underneath my eyes. That's uncool. That's why I wear tubing mascaras. Are you on the Pedro Pascal bandwagon? I'm not, y'all, I don't get it. I just look at him and I just see the guy who got his eyes busted out in Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones. I've never seen Lord of the Rings. This is a disaster. I did not anticipate a setting mist ruining my makeup like that. That was really annoying. So I bought the La Perla makeup on Nordstrom. My face is frozen. That is, it feels like hairspray. Oh, oh, I hate it. It doesn't look bad, but I hate how it feels. It feels like my whole face just got hit with hairspray. Ah, uh, okay, so one cool thing here, apparently, this is refillable. I wonder if I can put like, I don't think that I probably can, but maybe they're made in the same place. No, those are very different. So I have my refillable one from House of Siage here. But yeah, so we have a refillable lipstick component. That's what this is, which is very cool in my opinion. And all together like this is $54. Yeah, and I bought it with my own money. So $54 for the lipstick, $40 for the liquid eyeliner, $50 for the mascara, what? That is the second most expensive mascara I've ever bought. The first being uh, the $62 Westman Italia mascara, which was a huge disappointment. $56 for the matte silk refillable lipstick in Venetian red. I'm not sure if that's how much I paid. Then they have the sculpting brow gel and that is $42. And then a refill for the lipstick is $36 if you want to, you know, keep it and refill it. So there's that. And then if you want a La Perla bra, you know, there'll be $500. The Bosma foundation, you can get 10% off of your order when you, you know, just go on their website. It comes in a, an absolute menagerie of shades. 40 shades and they're in order of like deepest to lightest, which is cool. And I, again, wear 38, which is actually the third lightest, which, you know, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool that there are that many. So again, uh, it's $40 but you can get 10% off when you go on the like on the website. You can also get samples and it says evens out skin tone and leaves your face hydrated with a fresh and dewy glow flexible coverage light to full. So you can do whatever you want with it. I really dig the coverage. I am so miserable with the freaking finish on this right now. It is, that is such a hard pass that Laura Mercier, no wonder I haven't heard anything about it. I did, I just put, Fix Plus Magic Radiance on there so that my face can move again. I hate it. Yikes. Okay. The House Labs blush are $38 a piece and they come in five shades. Vegan, natural finish, clean as for a pressed powder formula, hydrating, and cruelty free. And the Hindash uh, color fluids are all $25 a piece. Okay, and the Johnny Concert quads, your build your own quad is $42. They have a selection of 40 different colors that you can put in them and you can get 10% off and free shipping on your first order over $50. So, mm -hmm. so uh, I think I'm ready to give y'all my preliminary final thoughts on these. I am going to try and stick to a format of like giving you as much information as I can in this kind of video when I'm trying all of them together, but I am going to still, you know, do roundup speed reviews every so often. That'll just be like quick and dirty videos where I give you my final thoughts on these things when I finally, you know, collect my thoughts on them. So, so far I dig the living crap out of this way more than I thought that I was going to. I love that it's the Bosma foundation. I love that it's self-setting. I love that it is a really phenomenal shade match and that there's a good likelihood that most people are going to be able to find a really phenomenal shade match. And I love the flexibility of coverage. That's something that is a huge challenge with with stick foundations is you have a lot of trouble usually spreading out to different coverage levels and building. You usually don't get both, but this does both and I really like it. I don't think that you really get like full, full, full coverage from it, but I just really like it. It fits my preferences really well. Like I could see myself using this a lot because I don't have to like squirt it out and put it on my hands or anything like that. It's just like bit, bit, bop, done. Like I just really, really like it. I like the whole concept of it. And I, this is, this is staying like top of mind for the moment. House Labs blushes are pretty much exactly what I expected. 
So I thought I was going to like them and I do like them. They are as pigmented as I expected them to be. So they are a little bit more difficult to use for people who are super fair. But I think if you're someone who is not intimidated by a little bit more pigmentation, this is worth it. Like it's just so pretty and it's so agreeable. And especially if you like the bronzer, then you'll probably like these. Just don't be afraid of these, these colors. Yes, they're vivid, but the powder does spread really nicely on the skin. They have that really like beautiful suede kind of feel to them. And for $38, yeah, it's a little wild. Make sure that you really, really like the colors that you're getting, you know? Make sure that it's kind of the blush that you're gonna wanna use all the time. Like go swatch them in store or whatever. But especially for medium and deep skin tones, I love it. I love how hydrating it is, but I also love how lightweight it is. I think that it's gonna work for every skin type. I just really like them. I actually like them, okay? I think they're really, really pretty. And I think they're really easy to use if you're Hannah pale, like if you're like a very, very pale, pale olive, yeah, I would steer clear of these. They're not gonna go sheer enough. Johnny Concert. I don't know if this is the brand that I would choose, like I said, to, you know, suggest you build a quad from. I think they're really pretty, but I do think that the actual technology of choosing the colors is a little bit leaves, it just leaves something to be desired. It does. And I think that if I were to choose something like this from another brand, you know, I would want to have options that have different textures. These are all pretty much the same. Doesn't mean that I'm never going to use it again, but it's $42. I feel like it's just not quite there. It's just not quite there for me to get excited about it. I'm going to be excited about like two of these shades but that's not excited enough to tell you to run, do not walk. Bronzer, you know what? It's a drugstore bronzer. We're talking about low pigment, talking about easy to wear, does have a little bit of a fragrance to it, but not too bad. And you know, I could see myself definitely using this again. It's a very underwhelming kind of package. Got a little mirror on the bottom, but it doesn't close. I mean, that's the drugstore for you. Oh yeah, it does. It closes, but like once this opens, this part, doesn't have its own locking mechanism. It's the top locks all the way to the bottom. So once you have opened it, the bottom can just open. That's flawed. Hand dash, I love your color fluids and this is no exception. They're just the best. Okay, okay. I use them as contours, I use them as blushes, I use them as eyeliners. I love them. La Perla. Okay, let's talk about whether these things are worth anybody's money. I am speaking specifically to the luxury buyers because no one needs to be convinced to splurge on these things. This is specifically for people who only buy from these luxury brands because they really enjoy the actual tactile quality and like the attention that's given to something being refillable, like that matters to you. It matters to me, but not enough that I'm like really, really, you know, thrilled and excited. This does not hit every mark for me. I like the formula. I'm disappointed by the difference between the actual shades on the internet and the shades in my hand. It's a pretty color. It looks okay on me. And I prefer the balm formula to the cream formula, but it's really expensive. And I just have to like bear that in mind. Like it's not nothing. It's 54 freaking dollars or $36 for the refill. And like, to me, that's just a silly amount of money for something that is imperfect. That said, I think the espresso lips color is really, really nice. I wish it was a little more espresso-y and a little less lips, but it's nice and I like it. And I'm glad that I have it, but I don't think that like you need to run out and buy it. The one kind of thing that I think is remarkable is probably the mascara. It's ridiculously expensive though. It's just, a, it's unique. It's brown. It's like wildly volumizing. It's got a lot of hold. It wears all day if you don't literally spray yourself in the face with the Laura Mercier finishing spray immediately and like soak your eyelashes with it apparently is what I did. I think that it's really pretty. I wouldn't kick it out of bed. I'm gonna keep using it but I am kind of excited to see how it matures in the tube because it's really, really wet right now. I'm never going to do a particularly good job selling you a liquid eyeliner because I'm just not that good at liquid eyeliners, but the liquid eyeliner is quite pretty and it does wear really well. I think that it is nice to have something that's brown and matte and you know, if that application process like works for you, the, the delivery system works for you, still really expensive. It's going, I'm gonna stop saying that because like, like I said, I'm speaking specifically to people who like this is not, a wild price point. If this isn't a wild price point to you, I'm gonna go ahead and give you, you know, actual like review. It's a pretty good liquid eyeliner. I will say like that little brush tip is not my ideal means of applying anything, but it wasn't the worst. 
And I've definitely done a worse job on my eyes before. <laughs> like this isn't the worst thing in the world. The thing that I will say about the mascara again is that like it's actually truly brown. Like I know that everything looks really contrasty on here, but this is truly brown. A lot of times brown mascaras people will be like, they're not really brown. Like it's really brown. It's not, you know, black that's just like off black kind of thing. So I really, I enjoy that about it. And the sculpting brow gel is really interesting. It's waterproof. That is something that like, I'm not sure I realized the first couple of times that I used it, but that's because I was like using an oil cleanser to get my makeup off. This time it was like in the shower. I was like rubbing it and I was like, whoa. And like I rubbed the, the hell out of it. And all it did was kind of move it a little bit. Like it's not something you would typically do, you know, just wearing your <laughs> brow mousse or whatever. So I feel very confident saying that that gel texture, that kind of like funky rubbery texture translates to waterproof wear. And the eyeliner too, like you gotta, you gotta kind of work to get it out of your eyelashes. Like it's also very, very tenacious and long wearing. I'm actually surprised at how the mascara is not as long. I mean, it's long wearing, but it rinses off a lot easier. Like you don't notice mascara stuck in your eyelashes. You notice eyeliner stuck, you know, if you don't do it with an oil cleanser. And that brow gel, I don't really know if anyone is like filing complaints and calling their congressman about their eyebrow mousse not being waterproof. But if that's something that drives you crazy about other brow products, this stuff is not screwing around, okay? Like it is not going anywhere. <laughs> Just wanted to follow up on that. It's really interesting the way that it holds, but it stays rubbery. I've never experienced anything quite like that. If what appeals to you is this packaging and the beautiful, luxurious delivery system here. Allow me to introduce you to Make Beauty, okay? This is also glass. This also has the same farm to market font on it, you know, the lash prototype. And it's just as like wet on the lashes. It does a very, very similar thing. It just doesn't come in brown and it's not $50. I definitely think that like this experience, this entire experience can be had with Make Beauty for half the price. And I encourage that because now that I have tried it, you do not have to. Also, this, I just realized that the reading looks like this. Not that one specifically, but a lot of times like when you pull like the top off of a nail polish, you'll notice that like the inside of it looks like this. This looks like it's missing its top. Like it's supposed to have another cap on it. Cause like the Kierweiss ones look like this when you take the really pretty cap part off. That feels kind of silly to me, you know? That just occurred to me. So yeah, those are my thoughts on on, on those. All, all that to say, I think it's a really pretty look. I'm really into like, you know, corally peachy things right now. Now this, this is not cool. This has been happening with the La Perla stuff every, every time. As I get this like the gross little like white ring. Stop that. So anyway, I hope I saved you some money, especially on some La Perla. And it's not to say it's like bad products. It's just, you can get, you can get these experiences literally at half the price. So let me know if y'all want me to do more like, you know, specific videos that are, you know, one brand oriented. It might be easier to find. I've just been like wanting to do my makeup and like hang out lately with y'all. So this is gonna be definitely another hour long video. Let me know what y'all think. I appreciate you being here. I will put a video up here that I think that you will enjoy. And my art link will be down below if you are interested in buying any of the art that you see or just looking at it. Uh, I have a Patreon where I do vlogs and we have like a nice close knit community. You can join for as little as a dollar. So I will, Link that down below as well for you to become a member if you so desire. And if you want to subscribe, that's helpful too. I love y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will see you hopefully in the next one. Bye.